Uh, okay, so randomly overnight, Sony has just announced their own drone. Like, where did this come from? All right, guys, so I usually wait to talk about a product until I've actually tested it myself and used it. But, you know, this is really interesting and it's really out of the blue. So I really want to talk about this. There's a few, like, kind of things that I want to touch on and kind of give my opinion on. Um, so, yeah, let's just get straight into it and let's see kind of what I think about this and where I think it's going to be going. So first up, it is called the Sony Air Peak and it looks like... A kind of like DJI Matrice kind of drone, um, big quadcopter, big batteries, like big everything. It has a gimbal, like a three axis gimbal that holds a full DSLR. It, looking, it looks like it's actually kind of like targeted towards the Sony Alpha range. I don't know, there's a lot going on here. And it's interesting that Sony has, which is a camera company, have jumped straight into making a drone and a gimbal when they haven't made either by themselves before. Now, I don't know how long this has been kind of like in development for. It could have been, you know, the last five so years, like they've been working on this, but it is a very bold move to just try kind of like build such a big drone as well um, and just go straight into the market that way. All right, so straight off the bat, it's like a huge drone. Oh, apparently this is, um, this is Sony's kind of like uh, electric car or something, like something car, I don't know. Let's get back into the drone. So. Pretty big drone, uh, looks like it's in a comparison to like the DJI Matrice and it looks like it's got removable legs that you can obviously for storage and whatnot, makes it a bit easier to, to actually travel with. It also looks like they have some sensors on the back as well as a few buttons and whatnot. I'm not actually 100% sure what that is. There's obviously some vents and whatnot. Here we have the little FPV camera, which is this whole setup is very similar to the Inspire. Um, so you got the little FPV camera at the top, which is fed to the actual uh, drone operator. So that is so they can see where they're flying. And then you have a second operator for the actual camera. Uh, and then below you've got two sensors as well. All right, and then this is the actual drone in its entirety. Like it actually, considering how big of a drone it is, it actually kind of looks compact. It looks like they've brought all the electronics very, very close and kind of made it tall rather than thin. And just like the Matrice, the legs actually fold up. So the reason they do that is that then it gives you a 360 degree view of everything. So with, with the camera on the bottom, that's on the gimbal, you can basically do a 360 degree pan or whatever, and you have a lot more room. Whereas if the legs are down, then obviously you only got to whatever, like not even 180 degrees. So that is why they do that. Now looking at these first few shots, obviously like it's hard to tell whether it is the drone operator's fault or the gimbal's fault or the, the camera's fault. Like there's too many variables in here, but it doesn't look super duper smooth. And obviously, like I was saying before, this is from as far as I'm aware, this is Sony's first gimbal and their first drone. So there's potentially gonna be stuff that they're gonna have to learn and they have to learn very, very quick to start implementing to get their this hardware like up to spec with you know Zhuon and DJI and all these other brands that have been in the market for so much longer. So now looking at this, this looks like it has some sort of waypoint system. Uh, this would be the drone operator and it looks like you can set kind of a, a path for it to follow. Honestly, it looks very, very similar to the DJI interface and obviously they, they would have taken inspiration from that. Now this shot here is really interesting guys. The first part is obviously it's very impressive to be able to fly so close to a car with a drone and you definitely need to have two drone operators to be able to do this. You have one person that's obviously looking forwards and flying and making sure they just don't hit the car. And then you got the second operator who is operating the camera and they can actually do the pan, the tilt and all the stuff with the camera. Um, but just looking at this shot, it again, it just doesn't look like super duper smooth. Like you can see it's kind of a little bit jerky, kind of like what you'd see out of a cheaper gimbal manufacturer who again, just hasn't had the time to develop good algorithms for smoothing and whatnot. Another thing I'm noticing is that there doesn't seem to be any sort of like follow focus or zoom motors attached to this. I don't know if it's something they're gonna offer, but like when you when you got your camera on a drone, you need to have access to be able to control everything because you know, like what if you're flying and I don't know, you accidentally leave it on 35 mil and so 16 mil and you get up and then you like, oh, have to bring it down and then unzoom it and whatnot. Or I don't know if you like accidentally hit something and it kind of, let's, let's not go into hitting stuff, but you know what I mean? Like you want to be able to control absolutely every aspect of the camera while it's in the air. Now I have to say it does look like it's pretty quick, but like some of these shots are freaking hooking it and it seems to be keeping up with the car. And it, it like it does look pretty nimble, but again, I don't know, it's just just those gimbal shots, like it it looks like it's a little bit jerky and it's just not perfectly smooth. I mean, this shot of the actual drone itself is super duper smooth. I don't know what they shot this on. I wonder if maybe they shot this on the DJI drone. <laughs> but again, like looking at this shot, like see what I mean? It's just like it's really jerky. It's just not smooth. Like I feel like if you'd shot this on a Mavic 2 Pro, you probably could have got 
better results. But, you know, I'm not judging. Like, again, it seems like it's very early stages of this drone. Like, I don't know when it's going to come out. I don't know what the cost is. Like, we don't know anything. So this could just be like the beta firmware and they're going to work on their algorithms and get it much, much better. But just from this video, it's looking like they've still got a while to go before they can kind of like get it to a stage where it can compete with like the DJI Matrice and other drones in the kind of market. Now looking at this, it does look like you have a direct feed from the camera itself. So obviously at some point it connects via probably HDMI and then it goes up and transmits it back to the receiver. All right, now obviously there's not a whole lot of information out right now about what it actually is, what the specs are, what it can do, what the payload is, like the, the runtime, all that kind of stuff, and how much it's gonna cost. But there is one thing that I can guarantee, and that is that it is not gonna be directed at the consumer market. Because if you think this is kind of like a competitor for the Matrice, unless it's under two kilograms, at least here in Australia, you can't fly it unless you have a drone license. And you know, once you start getting your drone license, you get stuck into that professional field and you start competing with drones such as like the DJI Inspire, Matrice and anything up from that. So I'm guessing the price tag is gonna be, well, probably up around the $10,000 mark. Like it really has to be because there's just so much going on. And I'm wondering as well if they're gonna allow you to control other cameras I'm, I'm, I'm assuming they are, but could just start out where you only have full control over the Sony Alpha series and then they'll slowly kind of bring in other manufacturers and whatnot, kind of like, DJI do on their drones and their gimbals and whatnot. But like, honestly, until they actually release that and release specs and actually like test it out yourself, it's really hard to tell what a product's gonna look like. But I, it is something that I'm gonna keep my eye on over the next like few months or few years, or depending on how long it actually takes to come out. Uh, and potentially, hopefully at some point when it comes out, I can, you know, meet someone that has one or get in contact with someone and get a bit more information so I can give it to you guys and just go from there. Like, I'm excited. Like, there's just so much cool tech that's come out last year and hopefully 2021 is a big year as well. Like, we're just at a stage now where technology is just, like, growing exponentially and it's like, like, tomorrow someone else is going to release a drone or someone else is going to release an electric car or something crazy. Like, it is just going insane. I'm so excited to see what all the future stuff holds for camera tech. All right, guys, if you did enjoy this video, then consider liking and subscribing. And if you want to watch those videos that I put in here from the Sony channel, I'll link those down below. But as always, stay creative and just be you. See ya.